You're listening to the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Folks and welcome to episode number one hundred and forty-three of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan, and this week we got a great one for you. My name is Kevin O'Shea, and I am the host of the Just Japan podcast. This weekly podcast thing, this audio party that enters your ears each and every week, where we talk about Japan stuff. Because if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to assume you like the Japan stuff. Okay, so this week I've got a great interview with Scott from the the Chillin Kansai channel on YouTube. Scott's been on the podcast before, not the first time he's been here. And this week we're going to be talking about unexpected things that can happen to you online when you're a content creator. Both Scott and I are Kansai-based Japan content creators. And we've both, over the years online, had a lot of adventures and misadventures. Scott's going to share with us a very interesting story about kind of a copyright battle that he's been dealing with over the past uh, number of months that's related to a podcast that he once produced, and it's a very interesting tale. Uh, And I'm also going to share a tale with you guys of uh, a very interesting moment experience, moments and experiences that I had several years back on YouTube that didn't leave the best taste in my mouth. So... It's kind of a cautionary tale, this week's episode, about things that can go wrong. Now, these are kind of extreme examples on this week's podcast. We don't want to kind of scare you guys off if you're prospective uh, content creators, but I think you'll find it really interesting, and there are a couple of good stories to share with everyone and good information to get out to you guys and to get out to everyone out there who, who may be considering becoming a content creator or who is a content creator and maybe from time to time faces some strange situations. So this is the first episode for the month of February 2017, and I'm really glad you guys took the time to download the podcast and to join me, um, yeah, and just and listen to some cool stuff about Japan. Um, I take great pleasure from putting, from putting this podcast together each and every week. And of course, you guys can find the podcast on all major podcatchers, iTunes, Libsyn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all that jazz. Um, yeah, we're all over the place. Just do a Google search for Just Japan Podcast. I'm going to... I'm going to... Throw it a call to action for you awesome people out there. Um, just, you know, if you guys enjoy the podcast, please share it with your friends, your family. Share it on your social media. When I post this online, please share it out there on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your whatever, Snapchat, your Instagram, whatever it may be. Let people know that a new episode of the Just Japan podcast has dropped and they should be listening to it and subscribing to it and all of that good stuff. So yeah, like I mentioned, this is the first episode for the month of February. Last month, January 2017, was an awesome month for the Just Japan podcast. Tons of you guys listened to it. Tons of you downloaded it. It, it made me very happy, very excited um, to keep on producing this podcast. That is the thing I love to do. Um, that's right. Uh, yeah, so what's going on in my life? Not too much. I'm just busy, busy, busy as usual, working my keister off, working my backside off. Um, putting bread on the table, you know, all that stuff, putting Beyblade in the hands of my son, Beyblades. Um, yeah, so working a lot, just basically coming home, hanging out with the family, producing this podcast, um, enjoying my, my daily cycles back and forth. It's really crazy, the weather here. I mean, just like last week, we talked about dealing with winter weather here in Japan, but the weather, it's really yo-yo weather, at least here in Kobe and the Kansai region. I mean, you'll get one day where you know, when I when I head off to work in the morning, it's, you know, below zero. Uh, when I come home in the afternoon, it's below zero. And then the next day, it's going up into the teens. It's like you don't even need to wear a jacket in the afternoon. It's really strange weather all over the map. I don't like that. I mean, if it's going to be cold, just stay cold for a little while. You know, just, you know, let me know. Let me get prepared for things. Come on, weather. Get with the program. 
All right, guys. Well, let's just jump into the interview portion of the Just Japan podcast for episode number 143. Sit back and relax and listen to Scott from the Chillin' Kansai YouTube channel share some interesting stories and tales about copyright infringement and whatnot and him dealing with it. And take a listen to me talking about、um, the time when someone tried to get me drummed off of YouTube and all of that stuff. So、uh, enjoy. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to episode number 143 of the Just Japan podcast. And this evening, I've got returning guest Scott of the Chillin Kansai channel. Scott, thank you for Yay. joining us. Yay! Thank you for joining us again. Thank you for having me, man. It's, it's a pleasure as always. And、uh, this evening, I wanted to have Scott on the podcast to talk about being a content creator, but when things can kind of maybe take a turn, an unexpected turn when you're a content creator. Um, and I'm sure that's happened to you, right, Scott? Absolutely. <laughs>、um, and I mean, the, to be honest,、um, I wanted to get Scott on the podcast when I actually watched one of his、uh, videos on, on his YouTube channel, his Chill and Consult YouTube channel.、Um, that was, it was all about、uh, an issue he was having with copyright.、Um, yeah. And, you know, I think any of us who spend any amount of time on YouTube, Um, on the internet in general, if you're a blogger. But I think, kind of, I'm not going to say so much maybe a podcaster, but、um, maybe trolls don't have the attention span to,、uh, to, uh, to kind of sit through a long podcast. But,、um, you know,、uh, if we spend any time online, we do have encounters with, with trolls and with other weird things that happen. Yes.、Um, yep. so, so before we get to, started,、um, I, you know, a lot of people who are listening, maybe this is the first time they've,、uh, they've, Heard you,、uh, Scott. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do in Japan, and a little bit about your YouTube channel? You bet.、Uh, I have been in Japan since,、uh, well, first came to Japan in '96, but、uh, then went back for grad school and was here, have been here at this job since 2003. I teach at a university. Okay. And、um, yeah, and I、uh, started YouTube to. Learn how to do YouTube so I could try to convince my students to do it. And that's not, they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I've had a good time doing it and、uh, it's been a lot of fun.、Nice. Um, my YouTube channel is Chill In Kansai and、uh, I make videos there, not as many as I used to, but、uh, I'm getting back into the, trying to get my schedule under control and、uh, make videos from a long term expat's. View of living in Japan. And a、uh, long time ago, I made a podcast called The Education Podcast or Edgy t s a l And that should still be available in the iTunes、uh, directories. And most of the directories, but a lot of the original directories are gone now.、Hmm. Um, but it should still, be, it should still be available in iTunes. And there is a web page up. Uh, which should have a link to the feed、uh, at education.org. Okay, now. Not education.com,、okay. which actually is another story that's kind of tangentially related. But. Haha, <laughs> education.com. That is a,、uh, a popular work, worksheet site for elementary school teachers. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I, I use it a lot.、Um, <clears throat> now, I'm, okay, so, you know, I think、um, with regards to the kind of. Story that we want to get into at the beginning, it is connected to this podcast you've, taught, you've、yes. mentioned.、Um, so、um, I'm just going to let you tell us about this, this story. And it, it has to do with something, <laughs> something called copyright, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And、uh, it's a little different than the traditional copyright woes because usually you use some music and、uh, then somebody dings your channel on YouTube or whatever. and And you have to go through whatever it,、uh, sort of fight you have to go through to either, you either have to pull the video down or change it or something like that. But this time, I was on the other side. They used my stuff.、Mm. And so、uh, it was,、um, I put the, the education podcast together in about 2006. And、okay. so、uh, this is kind of, well, it was ancient history for podcasting. Uh, you had to write all the feeds and everything by hand and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. But I wanted some music, and、uh, they were starting to crack down on podcasts for using,、um, using just regular songs, you know, just pull a song up and, and throw it at the beginning of the thing. Yeah. Because people weren't well educated about what copyright really meant. And I, and, suppose, I suppose, just to throw that out there to all those of you listening who may. 
think of starting a podcast in the future. Um, <clears throat> you got to be really careful of copyright. Um, so like music I use in my podcast um, is often it's it's actually from the YouTube content creators library. So it's mm. it's music that's like royalty free. Um, yep. and this and that. And most recently I started, I've, I've got a new song for my news podcast, but that was actually, um, I've got permission from the artist who is allowing me to use it as long as I'm using it not for profit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you gotta be careful with that kind of stuff. Yes. Very careful because, uh, in the U S it's still a, like a hundred thousand dollar fine for violating somebody's copyright. And if you're doing a podcast, there's proof. <laughs> so uh, it's it's not a uh, it's not anything you want to mess with. So what I did, I decided I wanted to get my own music, and that way I didn't have to worry about it. And uh, I came across this guy named Mark Blasco, and he did the music for the Twit podcast. Oh, okay, great. So I am a big fan of tech. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so the main theme that you hear for that podcast was written by this guy, and I'm like, well, I'm going to go look this guy up, find out how much it costs. Okay, and he's got some free, uh, some free music that you can use on his site. It's uh, podcastthemes.com. Okay, and uh, if anybody is planning to make a podcast and has some extra money, uh, Mark is a fantastic uh, composer and uh, performer, and uh, I highly recommend uh, Mark to anybody who's looking to put some tunes in their podcast. Right. For, particularly for themes and bumpers and stuff like that. Hmm. So I hired Mark, and uh, there's a, a couple of different levels that you can uh, purchase from him. And I don't think he's changed his fees, his prices, since I got mine done. But I paid $500 for him to write an entirely new piece of music. That would be the beginning theme, the opening theme, and the ending theme, and then some stingers for changing topics and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Um, so, like, if you wanted to do a news segment, you'd pay, play a little bit of music. I think that you use those as well. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I uh, I went and splurged and, and uh, hired Mark to write me my own tunes. Okay. And the version that I got, gave me complete rights. Basically, he signed over all of the rights to the music to me. So the only request that he had was that he would be able to use it, uh, he'd be able to put it on his site so that he could attract more uh, customers okay. by being able to let people listen to what they, uh, what he has done before. Okay, and yeah. I'm like, that? absolutely, sure. <laughs> so uh, I own the rights to the music, um, and it was functions as a work for hire. So I own the rights to the music. And uh, that was like 2007. Okay. So I was uh, kicking around on Facebook and I was listening to uh, trying to find podcasts about business and negotiation and stuff like that. And there's this one negotiator whose uh, stuff I think is really interesting. So whenever I see uh, something come up on Facebook, I'll go listen to the podcast and I clicked on it and I was like, Hey, that music sounds really familiar. Okay. What? Wait. Wait a minute. What? No, that can't. That can't be my music. And you know, I I listened to it like three times. I'm like, where's my files? And so I went back, dug my files, and sure enough, that was my music. And it was I the exact song was guy. it? It was the exact song. Mm. Yeah. And uh, and I was like. No, somebody didn't. He's and he's making money on it. It's like uh, we'll call it Bob's Amaze Balls Business Podcast. Okay, and uh, so he does it. You know, once a week or once every two weeks, he puts a new out and he does interviews with uh, business people and stuff like that. And he charges for related stuff. He doesn't charge for the podcast, but he charges. You know, he's making money off of it because he's using it to build his business. Blah blah blah. Okay. And I'm like, huh, that's not, um, no, <laughs> that's mine. He can't have it because mm. he never talked to me about it. Yeah, and you paid, you paid some <clears> good <throat> money for that. I paid actual money for it. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no. Uh, so I, I, uh, I went and did the research on the guy and found out who he was and where, he was, where he's living and stuff like that because the internet is 
um, scary about stuff like that. And mm. uh, basically, I mean, I just went to the podcast uh, web page and just there was a contact information contact sheet. I'm like, hey, that's really great music. Where'd you get it? <laughs> and so that started the conversation a little bit. And he was blowing me off a little because he thought I was just some dude, um, you know, not, you know, just a fan in where he got his music. Yeah. Some, somebody trying to spark up a conversation. And uh, I'm like about the third email in, I'm like, okay, so here's the deal. Um, the music that you're using is mine. I bought it. I paid for it. I had it written specifically for my podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, yeah, no, you didn't. I got this on Fiverr. And uh, the guy that did it to me on Fiverr, he said that it's it's free and it's no problem. I'm like, mm, he lied to you. So you need to remove that music from your podcast. He's like, nah, I don't believe you. Prove it. And all of this has been going back and back and forth for, I don't know, three weeks okay, or so. This was over most of December. So it would be a little bit of the conversation and, you know, wait, waiting for him to re- reply and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so finally it came down to, I don't know, a week before Christmas. And I'm like, look, you can't use this music anymore. It's mine. Uh, you need to remove it, not release any more podcasts. Cause he released another podcast while we were having this, discussion using the music using the music Hmm. yeah and he's like well i don't see how i don't see anywhere that it's that can you can prove that it's yours i'm like well here's the original files with the dates on it and here's the guys here's the mark blasco's website that has that music in it uh which is probably where the original guy stole it from Mm mm-hmm and uh, here is my correspondence with Mark showing that I have the uh, I have the uh, the rights, full mm-hmm. rights to the music. And he's like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see your podcast on iTunes. I don't see, I don't see anything." He didn't look. I know he didn't look because I did a search and it came right up. Okay. Um, and so he's like, well, "I'll have my lawyer look at it." Because even if it is yours, uh, because I did the right thing by having somebody make it for me, uh, I don't I don't owe you anything, and it's not yours, and I'm not going to stop using it. Wow! <laughs> and so uh, I sent and fired off an email to Mark and said, "Hey, um, I didn't think this would ever come up, but..." Can you just give me a two line explicitly saying that the education theme is yours, is mine, and that I own all the rights to it and stuff like that? I don't think we'll need to go to court, but just in case, it'll be easier than trying to go through uh, all of the correspondence and just finding the spot. Mm. And so he's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. No problem. So he sent me that. I woke up in the morning. Uh, the next morning, and Mark had sent me the a sheet that said uh, that explicitly gave the uh, rights to me. Mm. But uh, the guy was like, "Yeah, I'll have my lawyer look at this." And uh, the night before, when it, just before I had sent the thing to Mark, I sent the thing to uh, Bob's Amazeballs business podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, he said, "Yeah, I'll have my lawyer look at this." and uh, then I'll, I'll let you know what, what we're going to do. And so I sent him one more email that said, well, I know you've surpassed 35,000 downloads on this. You have 52 episodes of your podcast up, all of which are uh, eligible for $50,000 in fines per instance. Are you sure you want to take this chance? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I went to bed because I was mad. I went and put, because uh, he had some of the uh, podcasts, just the audio, he put it up on YouTube. Yeah. And so I put a strike on all of his stuff. And because I had the rights, it's mine. 
Yeah. And so, uh, so I put the strikes on all of his videos, which was about five or six at the time. Okay. Uh, cause he didn't have all 52 episodes up. And then, uh, I woke up in the morning and checked my email and he's like, I'm so sorry. I thought you were just a, a crank, blah, blah, blah. But evidently his lawyer had looked at the, the material that I had sent him and said, no, if that dude owns that. You need to apologize and remove your remove all that stuff from your podcast, and you need to do it now and hope that he doesn't sue you anyway. Mm. Uh, so it worked out. Um, he I he said that he's going to take uh, about two months to remove it from all the back podcasts and stuff like that. Okay, and I'm like, eh, two months is fine, or, or you know, I'm not in that big of a hurry. You can take six months. That's okay. But you just don't put any more out with my stuff on it. And then uh, if you want, we can talk about a licensing agreement for the ones that you already have. Mm. Um, and he never wrote back. <laughs> so he, w- he wasn't interested because he, he complained about, well, you know, if I take these down, then I'm going to lose all the views and, uh, you know, all the downloads and stuff. Because that's how a lot of the, the that's how podcasts are uh, valued. Yeah, is how many downloads have you had, and how long has it been up, and stuff like oh, that. Oh, absolutely! Like if if you're looking for a sponsor or something, one of the, the first thing they're going to say is, "Show us your analytics." Exactly, exactly. And so uh, he's like, "Well, you know," and I'm like, "Well, you know, you can pay me. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not a I'm not opposed to getting paid. We can work something out if you want, or but doesn't matter if you don't want to work something out, then you must remove my music from your from your show." Hmm. And so, yeah, the he never responded to the uh, the offer to uh, to to license it from me, which I would have done, and I wouldn't have been crazy about it. Mm. But you know, I want something. I had I paid for it. It's mine. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And I mean, it's 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 really incredible to think how just kind of how accidentally you stumbled across this. It was pure random. It was, that, that's really the unbelievable part. The number of podcasts that are out there, this dude just happened to do an interview with a guy that I was interested in uh, as far as you know, speaking stuff. And, and, uh, and so it was sheer random out of the blue. I can understand why he didn't believe me. Yeah. Because what would the odds of that be? Mm-hmm. Well... Sometimes even really low odds still happen. Sometimes you can be struck by lightning. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Jeez. So I mean, that's again. So so folks. Um. Again, I wanted to talk about things that come at a left field. Um. And that definitely comes at a left field. Um. I wanted to share a story this evening. Um. It's kind of the first time I've talked about this one on the podcast. Um. And it, it's it's got to do with my YouTube. And I mean, over the years, I dealt with different trolls and different interesting people. But this one was kind of, uh, kind of something that really took me back by surprise in a huge way. And this kind of shows how, like, even being a content creator can sometimes affect your job, and it can be kind of scary sometimes, mm. depending on the intent of different people. But um, uh, for those who may not be familiar, I know Scott is. Um, you know, I kind of. Before I was a before I was a podcaster, YouTube was my thing, and still is to a, a smaller degree. Um, but this this event actually is kind of what steered me towards focusing more on podcasting and moving away from the YouTube platform. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I mean like I mean I've been on YouTube since two thousand and six, and I think over the years my my channel went through a lot of different kind of stages and evolutions and trying to trying to find who I was and what I could do, and at different points, you know, um. Once, you know, monetization came in and there was that thing called the YouTube Partnership Program, you know, we all wanted to make a bit of money, mm-hmm. you know, of course, that's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I went through a lot of different evolutions. I went through, you know, kind of like the travel videos, the silly videos, the kind of life in Japan videos. And then what I started doing probably back in like 2010, maybe for about a year, 2010, I think I started, um, I think, you know, of course, we all know. If you're involved in YouTube or you're a big YouTube fan, maybe okay, maybe we, you all don't know, but uh, Philip DeFranco, the mm-hmm. Phil DeFranco show, SXE Phil, he was known at the time, and yep. he he was famous for having his kind of like uh, clickbaitish um, thumbnails. So he, you know, and that, at the point when you put like a kind of a uh, yeah, kind of a what's the term? Yeah, clickbaitish, mm-hmm. click a clickbait thumbnail. Um, so maybe, and and he had kind of like tabloid news videos. 
So it would be like literally just him kind of reading the news, tabloid news stories. And I kind of made a series of videos based on that. And I had a bunch of input from different YouTubers who kind of helped me along. And I called it the Kevin Report. First, I called it something like Weird, a- Weird News in Asia, and then I called it the Kevin Report. But essentially what I would do is I would go through different websites like japantoday.com, uh, Rocket News 24, you know, all these great yep. bastions of, of journalism. <laughs> and I, I just find like silly, ridiculous stories about Japan. And essentially the video would be me holding up a camera, talking to the camera, just re- literally reading these stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, I would put like some kind of, you know, risque thumbnail. Or something yeah. like that, you know, and, and it, it would get a lot of hits and it was, you know, did well for about a year. And then I just decided to kind of move away from that video. I'm like, this really isn't me anymore. And, you know, I kind of went on my way and started making other videos and a few years passed. And um, about three years ago now, I started making a lot of videos <clears throat> where I literally strap on a GoPro to my, my hat and I would cycle around the city uh, and just do like a POV bicycle ride and I would just talk about what I was seeing and people really like those videos. So I was making those videos and happy as a clam and, um, you know, making these POV bicycle cycling videos. And, uh, one day I'm at work about three years ago and, you know, just trundling through the halls, happy teacher, da, 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 things are good. And I was stopped by, um, the head of human resources and the vice principal of the school. And they're like, Kevin, can we, um, we, we'd like to talk to you. Um, is that okay? I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Da, 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 da. And, uh, they're like, can, can we go somewhere private? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. Not thinking anything. Mm-hmm. And we go into a classroom and they sit down, they pull up a couple of tables and they open up a laptop and they're like, um, hmm, we don't really know how about going about this. And they were, they, I realized this is very serious and they were very uncomfortable. And they said, this has never happened to us before, but, um, We've had a complaint about your YouTube. And I went, oh, boy, this is not good. Um, because, I, you know, because, you know, one thing I don't talk about is like where I work and this and that. And, and I'm like, I have no idea what this could be. So yeah. they basically have this laptop open and they said, well, we, we got an email from someone who is quite upset with you. And um, here it is. And they, they turn the computer around and they show me the email. And I read this email by this guy um, who is in the same city as me. Um, he's not he's not Japanese. So he's a foreigner. And he had a, mm. he had a he had a beef with the video that I made, and it was um, they said they watched the video and they couldn't see what the problem was. It was a cycling video, one of my cycling POV videos. But essentially, basically, I guess I I cycled through the neighborhood where this guy lived, mm. and he was really upset that I cycled through the the neighborhood where he lived, um, and he didn't want me filming in that area. Sure. So he tracked down where I worked and complained about the video, and he he asked my school to force me to pull down this video. <laughs> so they, you know, so the vice principal said to me, you know, I looked at this video, I watched the whole thing like twice. I don't get it. I don't understand why the guy's upset. There's right. nothing wrong with this video. Um, and, but then what the guy said is, um, but in the same email, he said, I really think you guys should, you know, how shall I say, uh, seriously rethink having this guy as a staff in your company because look at all these different videos that he's made uh, and he put all uh, these like links to all these different Kevin Report videos and uh, um, you know look at these thumbnails are so risque that's not appropriate that and it was a very detailed elaborate he went through my channel and, and just you know and it was there was a lot of thought and effort put into his email about me uh, so you know my the administrators were were pretty cool I mean, they were like, you know, you've worked here for years and we know you're, you're a really great employee and you get along with everyone, da, 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 da. We've known you've been a content creator. They knew I was a YouTuber, but like we didn't know about these videos. <clears throat> and they're like, um, although when we look at them, there's nothing wrong with the videos in a way. They're just like, they're, they were like, Kevin, we want you to think about what if parents came across this. Right. And I'm like, okay, okay. So they basically said, Kevin, we would like you to kind of stop YouTubing for a while. Could you kind of shut your channel down for a month or two? And could you remove all of those videos or anything that might be deemed not appropriate? Mm-hmm. And I said, absolutely, I will do that. And I was very upset because I was forced into the situation by someone. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I did what, what my employee, you know, in a, a livelihood's a livelihood, right? It's more important than the couple hundred that bucks. Is, more important than yeah. the couple hundred bucks I was making a month on YouTube. Yeah. So um, I, I shut the channel down and then I removed, I think I called about 400 videos. Wow. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were gone. And um, 
Yeah. So then, and then, you know, they were like, okay, so, you know, we've checked your channel and, you know, it all seems to be well and we believe you, we trust you. And they said, from now on, we're, we're you know, if you got our blessing to continue making YouTube videos, just PG, not even PG 13, Disney Channel, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, Disney yeah. Channel all the way. I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with this. So, um, you know, a couple of months later, I, the channel goes back up again and then they get another email from the same guy. Mm. And he's just complaining more about why. Well, okay. So actually, I'm going to backtrack. Um, so um, they got this email from this guy, and they said uh, he had said in the email that he had tried to contact me to take this video down. So he tried to contact me through the YouTube messaging service, mm. which I think I haven't mm. looked at since like 2008. Yeah, it's not very effective. Yeah, and and I think there's really no YouTubers who actually use it. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, YouTubers, if you want to contact them, they use Facebook, they use Twitter, they use Instagram, Snapchat. That's how you get a hold of them, right? Exactly. Um, so I went back and I, I looked at that messaging service and that guy had sent me a message, a very aggressive, like, uh, confrontational message. He said, I want you to take that video down. You cycled through my neighborhood. Da -da 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 -da. That's a danger to my family. Da -da -da. And I was like, wow, this seems really irrational. And he said, if you don't take this video down within 24 hours, I'm going to contact the police. Wow. That's what it said, which is just ridiculous. Holy cow. Yeah, because the police would have, if he contacted the police, they would have just laughed at him, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely <laughs> laughed at him. Um, like, just, they, they, you know, they were like, you're, you're a loony. And then, um, so so that was the, the message that I didn't see. So I guess he had sent that message. I never mm. got back to him. So then he decided to track down my employer and contact them and have them make me take the video down which is just wrong i know absolutely huh? and i mean it and it, it really you know it, it worked on his part the video got got taken down um mm. but it was i mean but then on top of that he basically tried to have me fired as well yeah because and and so you know i mean if if i don't you know i'm sure you know in japan who knows what the laws are like here but in, in canada i mean i Possibly, I might have a case to actually like go to a lawyer and and, right. and sue this guy. So um, fast forward a few months later, my YouTube channel goes back up. He sends another message to my school, kind of angry message, kind of like just complaining more. And at that point, mm -hmm. the vice principal said, "This guy really seems to have it in for you." Um, and he yeah. and he was like, um, "Kevin, just he was basically was like, watch your back." Right. <laughs> I was like, right. "Okay." Um, yeah, so I, I made a YouTube video. So I blocked this guy. So, he, you know, obviously, if he, if he can message me on YouTube, he's got a YouTube presence. And mm. I blocked him everywhere I could on my channels. And I made a video about it on my second channel about the mm -hmm. situation. So what did he do? He, because he couldn't contact me through YouTube, he contacted a few other video bloggers who he knows that I know. No and, kidding. And he he basically he contacted a couple of other video bloggers and threatened. He said to them, "You contact Kevin and tell Kevin to stop talking about this, or I'm going to sue him." <laughs> Holy crap! I know. Mm. That's that's yeah, that's pretty crazy. Crazy huh? escalation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All because I made the cycling video, um, which there was no one in the video, but. Um, so, you know, I thought I'd be the bigger man and just, I'm not going to go that way. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to engage him. I'm not going to fight him. Um, if he's this kind of, you know, rabid about it, I don't want, I don't want to tangle with this. Yeah. Um, and I'll be the bigger person about it. And okay. So here we go. Fast forward two full years. Mm. This, the story's gone. It's done. It's over with. I get a chance about a year ago to become a community volunteer where I live. Uh -huh. So I applied to become a community volunteer with the city. Everything's great. Um, I'm accepted to this volunteer program. And just before um, it's about to start, I get an email from this volunteer organization. And they're like, Kevin, we need to have a meeting with you. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, yeah. my. God. I guess you guys, you guys know where this is going. So I'm like, well, this is kind of weird. And they're like, I'm like, can we just like talk about it through email? They're like, no, we got to talk about this in person. I'm like, all right. This is really weird. I'm like, you're sure? Can we talk about it on the phone? They're like, no, we have to talk about this in person. So I go to the volunteer office and I walk in and there's a group of people sitting at a table and they're like, hi, Kevin. And they're all really awkward and like, thank you for coming in today. Um, you know, we're really happy, excited to have you as a volunteer, but we have a bit of a problem. I'm like, what is that? They're like, we received an email about you. Oh, no. And I just went, are you serious? I said, I think I know exactly what this is. And they all kind of looked at me with a bit of confusion. And then I just told them the whole story I just told you. 
Yeah. And they went, that's yeah. Insane. And they were like, yeah, that's exactly who it's from. And um, I said, and basically in this email, the, the guy said, this guy who is going to be a volunteer, I think I talked about it on, you know, on Twitter, on social media. So he obviously is following me a few years later. Yeah. And then um, he says, this guy used to have risque thumbnails on his fa- on his YouTube videos. He used to do this. He used to have this. And they said, we went through your YouTube channel very carefully and everything. And we don't have any idea what this guy's talking about. And it doesn't really make <laughs> sense. And and um, I, I told them the whole story. And then at the end of, of, of this meeting, they're like, well, we're really happy to have you as a member of our team. And be careful, Kevin. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And That's then, and when I went Crazy. home from that meeting, I told my wife about it. My wife was like, let's contact the police. And I said, well, you know, maybe we could. I'm not sure if, what the Japanese police will think of this, but, you know, let's just keep all this stuff and you never tuck it away. And someday, you know, who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe that may be yeah. a possibility. I think I think if I was in Canada, um, you know, there's a lot of um, – in current times, there's a lot of, of kind of new kind of cutting cyber crime, cyber harassment laws. Yeah. And, and maybe I'd be able to pursue something if I was in Canada, but Japan, who knows? Yeah, well, it kind of. I think here it would fall under the stalking stuff, but mm. and the Japanese stalking laws are weird. It's, I mean, they have teeth, but they don't. They aren't implemented equally all over the place. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The cops don't want to deal with it because it's, you know, if they do intervene and you know, there's, yeah, it's it's all sorts of weird stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Around it. But a pretty crazy though. So I mean, um, wow. So so that was that that's that second encounter was almost a year ago. So there was the first couple, which were like three years ago, and then there was like a two year lull, and then and then the guy came back. So uh, I'm hoping that's it. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I mean, <laughs> I've been angry at people. I don't know that I've held a grudge for that long. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing. And the thing is, I never, uh, you know, I never called the guy out by name in a video, or right. or, or did that kind of thing. Um, you know, I decided not not to not to pursue that or go that route. Um, but uh, but yeah, pretty wild, huh? And it's, it's yeah, that was a head scratcher. Um, and yeah. uh, definitely one of those kind of stories I want to get out there to people, you know, to hear. Um, I think this guy was, you know, saying like you, you like uh, you know, the originally three years ago when I made a video and talked about it, he was like. You know, again, sending sending messages to other people about it in anger, but um, mm. you know, again, it's just you know these kind of stories. It's it's good to get them out to people who who are out there. And I mean, this is an extreme case. I think both <laughs> of our cases are quite extreme. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, these these aren't common things that happen to content creators all the time. No, no. If it was, believe me, I wouldn't be doing this. Exactly. exactly. But I, I it think... is it is something that people need to to know about because in social media you are out there on the web and there are people that are not nice uh, playing the, well <laughs> they're not playing the same game that everybody else is playing. That is I true. Mean, and you know I I I would even hesitate to put labels like nice or not nice or evil or even troll to some degree. Mm. Um, they're just not playing. <laughs> what is general what everybody else considers is this this is this game and they're playing a different game that has maybe that as a part of it but it's not different rules and different yeah because uh, i mean i mean a lot of us i mean i think most of us get into this for fun right. and, and and i mean we do it because it is fun and i mean for example now um like this podcast that you guys are all listening to today and thank you for listening um this i don't there's no profit. There's no monetization system on my podcast. I don't have advertisements. Um, there's a few nice people who donate on Patreon, and thank you very much. You know who you are. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a not-for-profit thing. Um, mm-hmm. my, my YouTube. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I still occasionally make videos, but I mean, I think I get like a payment from YouTube once every four to five months, mm-hmm. which means I'm making between ten to fifteen dollars a month. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't do that for money. Um, right. when, once upon a time I did, you know, that was kind of motivation, but, and I think, I think too, like, you know, I mentioned that <clears throat> that was kind of the, the, the moment, uh, that kind of pushed me away from YouTube. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and you know, when, when things start to endanger your, your livelihood, mm-hmm. um, that's, that's a, that's a real reality check. I yeah. Mean, especially you know. like when you, when you've got a family and you've got yeah. like at that time, um, you know, I had a. A three-year-old son and a daughter who was just a few months old. Yeah, and you know, and then I'm getting, I'm getting a message like that, and then you know, there's, 
you know, going through my mind, like, am I going to lose my job because of this person who has an issue with my YouTube? And I was right. like, wow, this is, this is a real kind of scary reality. Right. Well, and that was like my interaction with the guy who was running the, the podcast that I had to, to deal with. I didn't, I wanted, I went out of my way to make sure that he didn't, that I didn't do those kind of negative things. I wanted to make sure that he understood that this was a legitimate situation mm -hmm. and I'm not, I wasn't just gold digging and, and I wasn't trying to be unreasonable about it. I wanted to work with him to make sure that he was able to continue his podcast. And, you know, he had the option to work with me or he had the option to ignore me, in which case I would have had to try to figure out how to go to court in a foreign country. Mm. And that would not have been, I mean, I'm sure I could have found a lawyer that would have taken it on spec, um, you know, where you split the, the payment because it would have been a pretty open and shut case. But I did not want to deal with that because, I mean, the money would have been nice, but but, but all the headache involved with it, yeah. forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, even like with this case, I mean, if, if someone had just sent me a message, a very nice, polite message or emailed me and said, Hey, here's the deal. Um, I do have a, a serious issue with this video and these are the reasons why. And if it was very reasonable, um, I probably would have just taken it down. Right. Um, right. Because you know, it's not like it's a viral thing that was making me a lot of money. Um, exactly. and of course I was messaged in a, in a way that I never would have saw the message because I don't, I haven't, I hadn't used that message service on YouTube in many years. Yeah. Um, and even when I did go back and look at it after the fact, it was just, it was a very aggressive, angry message. And I would have definitely not responded to that, responded to that in a, in a positive way. Yeah. I would yeah. have been like, you know, F you. Don't, exactly. Who, how dare you write to me like that? Yeah. And, and speak to me in that kind of condescending, nasty tone. Um, yeah. But, um, but again, you know, like you said, different people are in things for different reasons and who knows, we're all right. in different playing fields and we all have different agendas and different this and that and. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, which, which, so, break, yeah, oh, sorry, I want to, I want to tell one, one other story real quick because Please go ahead, uh, yeah. it, for people who are starting a podcast, wow, for, for where did you get your, um, uh, URL, your domain name? Where did I get it from? Did um, you, is it like from one of the big resellers? No, mine's actually, I, you know, a WordPress, um, or just, yeah, WordPress actually has their own like service. Okay. So okay. like I, so, so. Um, all of my my URLs right now at the moment, like BusanKevin.com and JustJapanStuff.com, those are WordPress blogs. But when you mm -hmm. when you sign up with WordPress, you can get like a pro account, and you can actually buy oh, right. buy a domain from WordPress. Oh, okay. So okay. like that's I use that service. I just bought my domain names uh, my domain names through them. Good. So if for those of you out there who are considering starting a podcast, get your domain name first. Yes. Good idea. <laughs> and make sure that's that what I did. I've always done that. I yeah. always make sure I buy that domain name first. Yeah. Well, so, actually, actually, just Japan podcast. For whatever reason, oh, I know why. I, I got just Japan stuff because I wanted the website to be not just the podcast, but about other stuff as well, Japan related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I I went and a long time ago there were only a couple of resellers for domain names. Um, Network Solutions, I believe, is the name of the company, and they were known to be terrible people okay. because what they would do is you'd search for your domain name. And if you didn't buy it immediately, they would lock it so you couldn't buy it. And they would basically buy it out from under you if you left the site and then resell it to you again at a higher price. Ooh. So I had education.com or, or I searched for education, E-D-G-Y-C-A-T-I-O-N. And uh, I didn't buy it at the time. I just wanted to check and see if it was available. I went back to buy it and the dot com was gone. Well, they owned it. And so they wanted to charge me like twice what the original price was. So I went over to um, uh, Bluehost and set the site up through Bluehost and got the domain name with that. But okay. I ended up having to do dot org instead of dot com because the dot org was available and Network Solutions had locked down the dot com. Uh, so a couple of years later, somebody went and actually bought education.com hmm. and then, and this is my own fault, then they trademarked it. Okay. So, 
but one of the things with trademark is uh, if there's prior art, you can't trademark it. So now there's a dude in New York that has education.com and he's got a business set, uh, set up around it and it's trademarked. I've, I've never directly got a hold of him because I didn't want to start that fight because <laughs> he's got more money than I do. <laughs> But I, if if we got into the fight, I would be able. I would probably be able to get his trademark rescinded because there's a couple of rules with trademarks. Once you get the trademark, you have to use it within a year. You have okay. to start producing within a year. And he he had the the uh, trademark for two years before they did anything with it. And so make sure I want to, the 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 cautionary tale is make sure you get the website the domain name that you want. Uh, I use Hover to buy my domain names now because it's uh, pretty cheap and you can get just the domain name. Okay. But if you go through a service like Bluehost, now I can have the email and stuff as part of it for free. Okay. And uh, and uh, I can host my own uh, WordPress uh, mm. on their site. So WordPress doesn't run my thing. I go through WordPress.org rather okay. than .com. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So. So make sure that anybody who's considering starting a podcast, make sure you get your domain name first. Yeah, I think before you announce to the world your podcast, I'm going to make this yeah. podcast and it's going to be called this. Make sure you've locked down that that URL already. Absolutely. And try to get Twitter and Instagram yeah. and Facebook all of the and social, all that stuff. Facebook and all as much as you can before uh you even get even it. like so, a, even a Gmail address, you know? Yes, yeah. yeah. So eventually I know this dude is going to I know he's had to have bumped up against my education stuff because I have the Twitter, I have uh, Instagram, I have all of the major social medias uh, networks with my with education, and he can't have it. And so eventually, Educa- education.com is a huge site now. That's a it's a big uh, um, education resource website. It's it's different. It's not edu. It's e d g y c a t i o. Oh, okay, okay. Edgy. Uh, at the edge of education. Oh, edgy. okay. I thought you were talking about like education.com. Yeah. Which no, is no. okay. Okay. No. Sorry about that then. Confused. No, no, no worries. <laughs> yeah, no, so it's a different it's a different thing. So uh he does uh I I don't know. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I'm not giving him a plug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh, wow, okay. <clears throat> well not cool. But... I exist. Yeah, I mean he we haven't been in contact. At some point I know He's going to try to take something away from me, and then we're going to have to have a discussion. Mm. But I'm not financially in a position to go against uh, a dude in New York who's making a ton of money. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So well, someday you know, I'll someday. come back and we'll have we'll discuss that fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we started recording tonight, folks, I was actually having a little chit chat with Scott, and, and I was talking about how when it comes to actually just like good old fashioned trolls, you know, the people who like harass you in the comment section and just like thumbs you down and that kind of thing. I think that's your kind of standard troll YouTube move. Just yep. give this person a thumbs down and um, just like talk smack. And it doesn't matter what kind of video they have. Right. It could be like a, a, the cutest little video in the world or the most offensive video in the world or the most benign video. They'll just give you a thumbs down. And usually write some kind of nasty comment. And I think um, those are things that I haven't really had in, in in the last many years has not been common. But I think of my early days of YouTube, especially yeah. my early days as a Japan vlogger, a J vlogger, when I was first here, before the term J vlogger, um, mm-hmm. like 2008, 2009, that's when I would often get a lot of trolls coming at me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it was a lot of, because my username was Busan Kevin. So I, I started mm-hmm. YouTube when I lived in in Korea. But I also made some videos about Korea, and then I came to Japan and made videos from Japan. So I would get a lot of people from Korea trolling me because I was now in Japan making videos, and then I'd have people trolling me, Japanese people trolling me because my name was Busan Kevin, and here I am in Japan. Right. And then I have people trolling me simply because I was a foreigner in Japan making videos about Japan. Yeah. Um, and I was I was saying to you earlier, I think that's mostly because at the time in the landscape there weren't a lot of us here. There were yeah. very few Japan vloggers. There weren't many at all. So right. we were we were prime juicy targets. Yeah. For yeah. Uh, for angry internet trollish people. <clears throat> but I think that in 2016, 2017, the reason why I don't get that anymore is because there's so many people here now vlogging. Yep. Yep. And there's there's a ton of people. There's there's 
there there are a, a fair, still a fair number of trolls out there, but you know there's bigger targets than us. My channel's still tiny, tiny, mm -hmm. and so it's not. It I don't think they feel it's as interesting for them to, for to get a rise out of me mm -hmm. uh, when there's when there's people who have a bigger audience and they can draw more attention to themselves just by shooting at somebody bigger. Yeah, like not to name any names, not going to name any names yeah, yeah, of yeah. YouTubers, but there's definitely some like foreigners now in Japan who've become become quite big and quite successful. Yep. And yep. Uh, and I mean, I've even seen on on some of those successful um, YouTubers who a lot of them I follow on social media and whatnot. I've seen some of them get quite upset and visibly show how upset they are by trolls. Yeah. Um, yeah. on their Facebook and on their Twitter, and they 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 t they talk about it and complain about it, and I think that's exactly. It's exactly you gotta. The, that's exactly yeah. what the trolls want, right? Exactly, exactly. And it's it's hard, it's hard to let it just just ignore it. Mm. But that's really the only way to kind of make it go away. You know, go in, delete the comment or hide the com the fact that you can hide the comment now and so they can still see the comment and it looks like for from their point of view it looks like it's still there. But no one uh, else but no one else can but see nobody it. Nobody else don't know. can see it. Yeah, that's awesome. That was a really good move on YouTube part, but yeah, because I can remember before, like I can remember before having like one of these trolls pop up and then deleting their deleting the comment, and right. the exact same comment would pop up from another account. Yep. And I would delete that, that and it, it would like moments later pop up from another account. I'd realize that like these people would have like twenty, thirty, forty YouTube accounts. Yeah, I don't understand who's got that kind of time. <sighs> well, yeah. <laughs> Well, some of these people almost take it. It seems like a full time job for them, right? If, if if there was a way to get paid for that, I guess that'd be one thing. But mm, yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, these are. I mean, uh, I I suppose. I mean, again, to, not trying to scare the the pants off you folks if they're listening. Um, you know, not trying to prevent any of you or um, those of you out there who are interested in becoming content creators. We're not trying to say don't do it. Um, right. And these examples we're talking about tonight are pretty extreme. But at the end of the day. I think I think it's pretty safe to say for anyone who's going to be a blogger or put themselves out there that sometimes you do have to remember that you do need a thick skin. Yes. Yeah. And the the best advice I ever got was just ignore it, hide the hide the comments, or at that time I deleted them or just just don't pay any attention to them at all. Yeah. Yeah. And they kind of go away because it's, they don't they're not getting their jollies out of it. They're not getting. They want you to fight feedback. them back. They want them to Absolutely. fight you back. They want them to. They want you to engage them. And if you don't engage them, normally they'll just get bored and go away and move on to someone else who will engage them. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, the worst trolls that I had were on, um, on the video. <laughs> this ended up being a big scandal, and I was kind of on the wrong side of it. But the Obokata uh, thing, the woman who did, was doing the research, and it turned out the research. Uh, seemed to be fake. And well, that was okay. That was in Kobe, right? In Kobe, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that one, I got into huge fights with like three or four people because of the way what my stance was on it and what their stance was on it, and and it was a huge waste of my time. <laughs> and other th should have been doing other things, and that's that's what those come in. They're stealing your time, yeah. and the more you can ignore them the more time you'll be able to keep for yourself. It's hard. It's hard to not say, you're an idiot. Go away. But they're not going to go away because they want to hear that. But eventually, though, it does get easy, I think. You yeah. know, I think eventually if you've been around long enough, you're just like, eh, eh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one. Exactly. Can't, can't make them all happy. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's not cool, but that's just a, it's right. a word. It's a word I'm using. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So a, a very interesting topic, um, Scott. Thank you for chatting to us about it tonight. And oh, my th pleasure. Man. Thanks for listening to my story out there, folks. Too. I'm I'm glad to get that one out there. I've I've been kind of sitting on that for a while, and I'm happy to share it. To kind of finally get that off my chest. Yeah. Um, and um, again, uh, Scott talks about his copyright um adventures on his youtube channel chillin kansai yep. um before i let you go this evening sir where can people find you on the social media uh well the uh the best place to do best thing to do is search on google for chill in kansai c h i l l i n c k a n s a i chill in kansai uh and i'm on youtube and twitter and instagram and uh, i have a musically but i haven't been using it nice <laughs> I, nice 
Facebook and everything else, you should be able to dig me up there. Cool. And I'm going to put all of those links in the show notes for this episode, folks. For uh, on, Go to JustJapanStuff.com under uh, episode 143, and uh, you'll find all those links will be there. And uh, Scott, thanks for joining us again on the Just Japan podcast. Thank you very much for having me. I look forward to uh, talking to you again. Awesome. <laughs> All right, I want to thank Scott for taking the time to stop by the Just Japan podcast and share his story with you guys. Um, I'm glad you took the time to listen to my story as well. I think there are two interesting stories, two important stories to share with you folks out there who are content creators. Just to let you know that, you know, obviously Scott and I talked about the fact that the you know the majority of the time what we do is is a lot of fun, and that's why we're still doing it after so many years of being online. I mean. If this wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it because we, you know, we certainly don't make money doing what we're doing. We're not superstars. We're not even quasi superstars. So it's not about monetization. It's about doing this because we enjoy doing it. But sometimes, sometimes there can be people out there who stick it to you in a weird way, um, and you know that that can take the fun out of things. And it's unfortunate that that happens. But just you know, beware. Have it in the back of your mind that sometimes things like that might happen. Um, again, uh, on this evening's podcast, both examples were pretty extreme. Uh, I've luckily have never had that was you know I haven't had an incident like that happen. Well, I guess I did about a year ago, but hopefully that will not happen again. If it does, I'll share it with you folks, um, all the details, and tell you all about it because you guys are my awesome Just Japan podcast listening peoples of, of coolness. And I want to share that with you. Um, I want to thank Scott again, like, like I said earlier, for coming on the podcast. Um, remember, he mentioned that you can find all of his stuff over at Chillin Kansai on YouTube. Of course, the show notes for the Just Japan podcast can be all located um, at justjapanstuff.com, justjapanstuff.com. So all of go to one episode number 143, tonight's episode, and all the links will be there in the show notes. Go bookmark that page, save it, look at it, share it with your friends. Um, of course, you can find the Just Japan podcast over on iTunes, Libsyn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio. All those links are in the show notes as well. You can find me on Twitter. Please contact me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at jlandkev, J-L-A-N-D-K-E-V. Um, that's awesome. I'm there a lot. Go like the Facebook page, okay? Go follow the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Stuff. Um, you can email the podcast at any time at just Japan podcast at gmail.com. And of course, you know, yeah, just uh, come come and say hi sometime. You know, drop me a line online. Drop me a line on Twitter. Uh, oh, and check out my Instagram at jlandkev as well. All of those links will be in the show notes at justjapanstuff.com. And of course, I, I sometimes I forget to mention, check out my nature photography. That's right. I'm into wildlife photography. Uh, that's facebook.com slash birds of Kansai birds of Kansai. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Go check it out. Like it, share it around. If you're into the nature thing, if you're into the ecology thing, the environmental thing, the climate change is real thing. Cause I tell you what I am, I'm all about that. Um, a part of my job, by the way, sometimes you'll notice on my Twitter feed, there's a lot of stuff about climate change and the environment. That's because I am a passionate, uh, environmentalist. I'm a passionate naturalist. I spend a lot of my free time studying about the natural world, about ornithology, entomology, bugs, birds, and actually a portion, a big portion of my job every year is to teach children about nature, about environmental stewardship, about critters and creatures out there. I teach um, classes and workshops about things like climate change, about taking action, what children and families can do in order to take action to combat things like climate change, helping the environment. Um, so that's it's not just it's a it's a passion of mine in my private life, but it's also part of my job. So I'm again very passionate about environmental issues. So I do talk about those on Twitter and on Facebook from time to time because it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, yeah, so, and obviously in these times in the world, um, with some people out there in seats of power who may not believe in the things that I believe in, um, that just makes me more passionate to continue the, the good fight that I've been leading and being, you know, not leading, but I'm a part of, um, yeah, so there you go. Um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, folks, you guys are awesome. Thank you for taking the time to download the podcast. Um, thank you for taking the time to share it with your friends and family and all of that stuff. 
So wherever you are in the world, everyone, I hope you are happy. I hope you are healthy. And I'll be talking to you again next week.